how do you define um, the type or the nature of your soul or spirit? What kinds of souls and spirit types exist and do they have different frequencies? Um, what determines the nature of the soul? How can one's soul nature be read by others? Is there a relation between the soul nature and the various cosmoses? Is there a relation between the soul nature and the egregores? So, well, that's actually one question, but it's composed of a lot of sub-questions. So let's start with the definition of um, what is a soul or a, a spirit. And it depends very much on the, yeah, on the system you're working with. Uh, so some religious systems define the, the spirit as being eternal and the soul as being temporal or the other way around. Um, the way I usually use it is that the soul is the eternal part of our being and the spirit is the temporary part of our being. Um, so our soul is relatively um, shapeless, formless, identityless. Um, it's really the core and the spirit is more of a, a manifestation of that core. And in a way the uh, the souls can also have different natures, um, and um, uh, in a way the condition of the soul is very much dependent uh, on the type of cosmos it belongs to. So um, depending on our uh, higher sins, which I talked about in an earlier lesson, if we have no higher sins, if we are our soul is at one with the will of the, uh, the Absolute, with the will of the Creator, then we belong to the Divine Cosmos. Um, if our uh, strongest sin is that of goodness, the desire to relate and to connect to other beings, then we belong to the Satanic Cosmos. And if our strongest relationship is to ourselves, um, to, with an interest in our own development, our own improvement, then we tend to belong to the uh, Luciferical Cosmos. And if we um, like to, um, to use our power, our influence on others or over others, then we tend to belong to the Arimana Cosmos. But even though we can belong to these different Cosmoses, even within a Cosmos there is a, a yeah, big difference between the types of souls. Um, there are souls which are, um, in a way, created directly by the Absolute. Um, so this is kind of like the first generation of, uh, of souls. And um, then the things start to get a little bit more complicated. Um, because these first generation of souls, the Archangels, if you will, um, they also started to create, because they were in a way created in the image of the Creator and they themselves inherited the desire also to create. And there can be various processes in this. So if you have such a high spirit, it can um, in a way uh, take a part of itself or copy part of itself, not its whole, and make that into an autonomous being. Uh, so just like the Archangels are not quite as great as the Absolute, as the Creator, the creation is slightly smaller, slightly less. And in this way, you can, in a way, uh, uh, a soul can clone itself. It can create lots of clones. So the nature of our being can be the clone of a higher being. And uh, in its nature, it will be very similar to the being which... Uh, which is, is uh, a reflection of or an element of. Um, but because of this uh, process of duplication, of copying, where every copy something loses, uh, then ultimately the beings which are created by the lowest beings, they are very primitive indeed and have a very low consciousness. So to compensate for that, um, actually energies can be mixed in. So uh, one of the options is to mix in energies of the Absolute itself. So to co-create, you create something, you know it is imperfect, it's just 
less than you, but you ask the creator to be part of your creation, part of your process, and some of the energy of the, of the Absolute will go into the newly formed soul. Um, in general, this, uh, this newly formed being will be a lot closer to the level of the original creator and will sometimes also possess certain powers the creator does not have because of the influence of the Absolute. Instead of the influence of the Absolute, you can also use the powers of another soul. Um, so two souls together, or actually a group of souls together, can also create a being. And this uh, conglomerated being can be actually greater than any of them. So if you get together with ten people, each gives in a way a part of themselves, then all the parts added together can be greater than any one with member of the group. Um, and in this way our souls can also have a very different nature. They can be, in a way, you could say a fragment or a reflection uh, of a, a relatively high being, of a relatively low being, or a conglomerate of uh, conglomerate creationship of many uh, many souls working together and this can also be done both with and without the assistance of the Absolute. Um, the type of soul in a way um, tells you a little bit about uh, the fundamental reason for incarnating. So as I said before in the Satanic Cosmos it is the desire to, to help others and whatever incarnation you will take, whatever spirit is resulting from that uh, soul, will have this inherent desire to connect with to other beings and to relate to other beings. And in the same way, if we have uh, as our inherent nature of the soul to, um, to work on ourselves, to, to, um, to create effects, to experiment with ourselves, the being which is ultimately created will have that desire to experiment, to learn, to grow, to develop itself. And also if we have the desire to live in an orderly system, to create rules or to follow rules, then this will be also inherent in uh, yeah, the spirit we create. And the spirit we create uh, depends very much upon the available energies. So. Um, the soul ultimately starts connecting with other shapeless powers and will slowly move into a collective consciousness. And not in every solar system the same collective consciousnesses are available. And also not the same types of lessons are available. Um, you could have, um, in a way, uh, solar systems without war or with it, without love or without the duality between masculine and feminine. Um, so the nature is very much dependent upon the energies of, are, which are available to uh, manifest the tendencies. Um, this also makes it very um, difficult, if you will, from, to move from one solar system to another. Um, and in, in general this is done, it can only be done by in a way dissolving all the experiences or transcending all the experiences you had in one solar system so your energy can go back and reintegrate in the soul before it reincarnates in another solar system. Um, it is also possible for a soul to have multiple spirits at the same time. So it is possible to in a way live in two solar systems at the same time but each spirit is separated from the other spirit and only when every spirit which is manifest that learns to reconnect to the soul, then they can indirectly also start having contact with each other. Um, working with, with egregores is a really helpful way to move also from solar system to solar system, because um, some of the larger egregores, they're active in many different solar systems. So this is a very um, nice way of in a way uploading your consciousness or your awareness to that egregore and without having to learn everything there is to learn within that solar system uh, you can already move to another solar system 
if the egregore is okay with that. Um, so an egregore, uh, while it in a way asks of you to serve its purpose, it also grants you much more possibilities and much more uh, adventures in, uh, in your incarnations. In a way, the, the souls are, um, in my experience, uh, not inherently different from each other because they all come from um, the same source. So uh, most souls were part in the first generation of the unfallen cosmos. Um, but what is a very big distinction is basically that the process of creation did not end with the fall. Um, so while some of our souls were created within the unfallen cosmos and therefore have experience with the, the nature of the Absolute um, before they fell down, some of the uh, souls which exist have been created within the fallen cosmos. And so they are lacking the inherent experience um, of the, the, yeah, the, the, heavenly, uh, the heavenly worlds and the universe outside of our universe. And this is also a very, very fundamental difference. Um, because many of the souls who fell have the desire to return. But the souls which were created in the fallen cosmos, they have no idea of uh, yeah, the unfallen cosmos and they also do not have this inherent relationship uh, with the Absolute or experience with the Absolute or desire to get back in touch with the Absolute. Um, so these are souls which are basically born or created in, in darkness or in ignorance. Um, and this is a very fundamental uh, difference in, uh, in their nature of being. Um, these, um, yeah, in a way, darkened souls um, exist in all uh, in all the three different cosmoses and they can also be both uh, light and dark so that a being has no knowledge of the of the higher worlds does not say anything about its intention or desire uh, but any cooperation it would have with uh, the light side who is very interested in reintegration would be very blind um, so, when a soul has, um, has a desire to, to move onward, it will generally try to find uh, manifestation forms which are suitable to it. And here it becomes very complex because there are a lot of differences in the population of different solar systems. Um, so if you look at uh, levels of awareness, with the bottom level just being material awareness, then life force, then um, in a way sensation, emotions, collective consciousness, um, the consciousness of, of powers, of formless powers, and the consciousness of the, of the soul of itself, um, then you see that um, while ideally this should be a pyramid, um, or a ladder. Uh, this is not true for all solar systems. Some solar systems are populated with only en enlightened beings, souls which have, um, or spirits which have a consciousness of their soul. And some solar systems are populated more like our solar system with beings who only have a consciousness yeah, of their material form and of their own sensations. Um, so there's a big mix, if you will, in, uh, in every solar system into what type of consciousness is, uh, is present. Um, the type of uh, consciousness is very much dependent upon um, the ability to integrate all the different energies which are available. So every uh, energy requires has a learning curve. How to work with, for instance, solar energy, moon, lunar energy, Jupiter energy, um, all the energies of the different stars, of the different elements. And um, what you do see is that as uh, spirits incarnate more often, or if a soul has had more incarnations within a solar system, they will develop a greater skill in working with the local energies. 
so a certain um, ability um, to use the energies to in a way correctly reflect the nature of the of the soul is something which in a way uh, matures through incarnation through experience in the solar system um, so the the in a way the maturity of the spirit can be measured by looking how much the incarnated self uh, is very similar to the, the source, to the soul. And if this is more or less a one-on-one -on -one relationship, or a, if it is not completely similar, it is at least a very direct manifestation of the will and the desires of the soul, then you are talking about an enlightened state of being or an enlightened being. Uh, but for most of us, the lower energies of our bodies, of our thoughts, of our emotions are very different, difficult to control and often also, as I said before, a mix of like our own biological bloodlines, ancestors, karma and lots of other influences which we are unable to yeah, instantly transform or to free ourselves from. Um, so it is a little bit difficult to, to tell um, the nature of a soul from the, uh, the spirit which is manifested in our uh, universe, but a few things can be more or less inferred from it. Um, if you really want to work on a soul level, um, you would have to move up in your, with your own consciousness towards the layer of, uh, of enlightenment to really um, look upon them from one soul to another. Um, so it's difficult to say something about that. Um, what is rather um, confusing to many people is that the, the state of the soul or the spirit does not in a way correspond to what we think of as a natural hierarchy in our physical world. Uh, so an enlightened being may also incarnate as a cat or a dog or a tree and definitely not necessarily as a human being. And this is basically because the, um, the collective consciousness also has a certain quality. And um, as I said before, you have a different order um, within the dark cosmos and within the light cosmos. So if you look within the, within the dark cosmos, then it is very much an order of power. Um, so the greatest beings here are um, uh, the greater uh, yeah, um, dark angels, dark egregores, uh, uh, landscape spirits who control big regions. And within uh, those regions, there are smaller regions. and. Um, the, the most powerful being within the region on a physical level is usually a human being and below that there are uh, other beings. And um, there is a very nice uh, system which is also used by the Catholic Church of the nine layers of, uh, of well, what they call angels, but they are in a way dark angels, how they um, in a way form a hierarchy which uh, dominates uh, our world. Um, if you look at the light cosmos, it is rather different um, because in the light cosmos it is uh, very much about purity and harmony, which is important, not so much power. Um, so although humans are uh, the strongest manifested being uh, in the dark cosmos, if you look in the light cosmos, it is actually the, the natural beings which are higher than the humans because they are more pure. Uh, they're less um, uh, polluted, less uh, in, in fighting or in disagreement with themselves. Um, so it's, it's a very different uh, order uh, which we find there. And if we look at the light cosmos, um, we find that, that actually on the, on the highest level, um, we find the, uh, the spirits who act as the, the guides on our spiritual path. Um, so they are the, the caretakers of, our, uh, of the journey of all living things uh, through their manifested uh, lives, through their incarnations. And um, on a smaller level you have the, the kind of specialized 
uh, spirits who help people with specific problems in dealing with relationships or disease or um, financial trouble or uh, learning a, a specific skill. Um, so uh, below that uh, you find the trees and um, below the trees you uh, tend to find the greater landscape spirits and below the landscape spirits you find the animal spirits and then you find the human spirits and uh, below the human spirits there's actually still the elemental powers um, and it's a rather strange order because you would think an element is, is rather pure rather yeah simple always in harmony with itself but I don't make the system I don't comprehend it completely either um, but in a way the natural order is uh, therefore for in a way for the elemental powers to react to the desires of the of the animals so in a way the landscape will change itself will reform itself uh, energetically to uh, yeah, in a way respond to what is living on it um, and the animals uh, will yeah, respond to, to um, the, yeah, the, the landscape spirits and the landscape spirits are in a way inspired again how to behave how to shape the landscape by the vegetation which is on it so it's a rather uh, different system of organizing the world or organizing the landscape than what we are used to Um, so the different frequencies are indeed very very apparent so the highest frequencies as I said are um, yeah, the, the guides who guide us on our spiritual path then the guides who guide for very specific things then um, uh, plant spirits, landscape spirits, animal spirits, human spirits and uh, elemental spirits and so the elemental spirit tends to have the lowest vibration than the human, than the animal, than... Okay. So how can yeah, one's soul nature be read by others? Um, well, one of the things you can do is in a way, um, yeah, just give people a questionnaire and see how they look upon things, what is their deepest motivation. So you can see a little bit of what, uh, what cosmos they, uh, they belong to. Um, it's also possible for a person who has a different soul nature, so who has an elemental soul nature or animalistic or uh, uh, even nature spirit or tree spirit uh, or guiding spirit soul nature to incarnate or yeah, spirit type to incarnate in any other form. So. Um, in a way, uh, a nature spirit can also incarnate in in a, in a human body, or even in a in a stone or in a tree. So they can go higher or lower in uh, in form. And um, what you often find is that it is uh, a matter of sacrifice. So occasionally you will find that. Um, a person has a very high consciousness or a tree or a cat and this usually means that a spirit from a higher order has descended to a lower level in a way to help with the collective consciousness of that species because it is the collective consciousness which in a way um, creates a very more or less the boundaries of, of what is the average level so it is very possible for a human to become more um, high than animal spirits or nature spirits or tree spirits or even guiding spirits. Um, what I said are just more general brackets, general systems of uh, looking at, uh, at energetic levels. Um, and uh, such a, uh, in a way such a lower incarnation is often um, because of a desire to help that specific um, kind of being along. So you can have, um, in a way, humans who have reached enlightenment still incarnating as deer to, in a way, improve the yeah, collective consciousness of the deer uh, as a, 
as a whole. So it is not easy to tell from the form. Um, so is there a relation between soul nature and egregores? Yes, there is quite a strong relation between that. Um, because the egregores are um, just like the gods and goddesses, they're often linked to a specific cosmos. So certain egregores are um, uh, yeah, satanic in nature, um, or they are um, more interested in the, in the unfallen cosmos, or in the Luciferic or in the Romanic cosmos. Um, so egregores are not by definition very limited to, to one cosmos, um, but just like uh, yeah, gods and goddesses, they tend, because of their nature, the focus, the thing they want to work on, uh, to be very strongly associated with one cosmos. So, um, for instance, the, um, the the egregore of the of the Templars, um, which is an egregore of, in a way, the, yeah, creating holy spaces and trying to yeah, climb out of our universe. So it has a um, luciferical aspect because it is about self improvement, self. Um, uh, yeah, growing yourself and that also has a relationship to the unfallen cosmos because that is where it, it is trying to lead um, so but therefore it's also like slightly less strongly connected with the Arimani cosmos and the uh, uh, nature cosmos and for instance if you look at um, for instance the, the egregores of Nora Igma or the Grail Knight they are very strongly connected to the satanic cosmos so this is very much uh, growing together, uh, communal travel to a, to a higher cosmos by forming a grail or helping all parts of the group or of the collective consciousness. Um, so yes, egregores are very specific to, uh, to cosmoses. And uh, depending on yeah, the own nature of your soul, you will find also that certain egregores connect to you more easily. So that brings me to uh, the next question about uh, family combinations between uh, dark and light um, members in one family. Um, yeah. Um, what you often find is that if you really connect strongly to an egregore, um, that you have friends but also you have enemies. And, um, just like uh, you will c continue meeting people from the same egregore in different stages of your life who will help you, who will guide you, you also keep ending up with more or less the same problems which are manifested by yeah, the opposite egre egregore um, which your egregore is supposed to or fighting with. So with, by becoming part of an egregore you don't just get friends, you also get enemies. And depending on how yeah, your position in the egregore, if you grow in position, your friends will get stronger, you will get more help, but also your enemies will also grow in strength. We'll just move into a different power category. Um, often what you, uh, what you see is that in your youth, you're confronted, or in a way, the, the problems which you had in previous incarnations are re-manifested. Uh, so often the, the fights you had, uh, the struggles you had, you will have again in your youth with your brothers, your sisters, your parents, um, other family members, your teachers. Um, so it is in a way um, helping you to remember your previous incarnation and your previous struggles, to remember your strength, but also to remember your weak points. So this is very much the purpose of, uh, of your youth, to reintegrate, if you will, the, the memory of your previous incarnations, which is carried in your soul, and translate it into your current in, uh, consciousness. 